Now that we've done our shopping for this month's batch of reviews, let's serve up what I got from the vegetable aisle. It's Corny a la Capricorn. And he's learning about being responsible. Your responsibility to put your things away. It's your responsibility. This will be the fifth corny film I covered, and the fourth entry in the Adventures of Capricorn series. There's still one about bike safety and the dentist video, and maybe this eighth one about values, so I'm hoping they get uploaded in the future. To most people, they're just dumb little flicks, but stuff like this is just fun to poke at. They're inoffensive, yet sincere about what they want to tell you. Plus, it's Richard Horvitz. How can you go wrong? So let's see how he's going to get us to count on him and teach us about responsibility. So the title crawl says that Corny wants to be trusted, which is a bold statement since he's had so many opportunities, but... This weekend, I took the cow to town to sell it. Strangers posed as smiling friends. Ah, it's hot. Yeah, he's a little too dumb to be trusted with anything. By the way, remember how the Zarconians were just clones of himself in the exercise video? Well... We salute a true Zarconian winner. Wow, they didn't even try with this. Are the Zarconians cloning themselves as a means to fight off extinction? Anyway, that scene was just in his head. Back in reality, he's in a contest to guess the number of jelly beans in this jar. Of course, Mr. Sanders won't give them a hint, so they ask King Roland for advice. You know, fresh jelly beans are soft and sticky and they all squash together, but old jelly beans are hard and stale and they don't squash. Not as many could fit into the jar. This does come back later, but for now they get a visit from their neighbor, Larry played by Sherman Hemsley. He was in The Jeffersons, Ghost Fever, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and even Family Matters. Apparently, he and his wife are going on vacation and would like one of them to take care of... Three dogs, two cats, six dragonfish, a cockatoo, two turtles, a ferret, a lemur, a boa constrictor, and two mice, to be precise. Well, actually, you don't have to take care of all of the pets. We're taking the three dogs, the two cats, the six dragonfish, the lemur, the cockatoo, the ferret, and the boa constrictor are going with us. It's the mice we're concerned with. How big is your car, then, if you're bringing that many animals? And yeah, he does say they own them as part of a little pet circus, so it's probably big. Too bad you picked the wrong neighbor to take care of your pets. Care of a Flamubian Mira? I'll be a good babysitter, I'll feed them, I'll pet them, I'll sing to them, I'll rock them to sleep at night, I'll even make them little clothes. I'm a good sewer. They'll be dead in a week. I don't know how, but he'll find a way. Seems Corny's gotten a little sloppy lately, as he hasn't been putting away his clothes. Mrs. E! I can't find a thing to wear. You wear the same outfit in every video. Well, except for the exercise one, but you know what I mean. Look, Corny, make sure you keep plenty of feet in the dish and fresh water in the bottle. Maybe you should be writing this down. No need to, Mr. Springfield. I've got a great memory. That's why you never talk to strangers, always tell the truth, and not let your parents leave you with humans who may not be your foster family. Got it. The bag with the bright red tag has the wood that is good. It's a lot to remember. Well, Larry already gave that answer away. You should take notes. Though, in fairness, he could have given him a checklist to help him manage an animal that wasn't a dog or a cat. Take good care of him now. I sure will, Corny, and I'll give you $20 for taking care of my mice. $20? Holy Zarkaroni! I'm saving up to buy a skateboard, and that's sure gonna help out a lot! Let's hope, because those things are expensive. Oh, they did provide a checklist. Good on them. Now if only Corny could learn to be more responsible and clean up his half of the room. Good thing school is teaching this exact subject. When we're young, our parents and other adults are responsible for us. And as we get older, then we have to start taking responsibility for ourselves. Now, here is a list 
of assignments to help us learn about responsibility. I want you to pick one and turn it in by Friday. John and I are going to share the responsibility of taking care of an egg. Yeah, why not? Corny shouldn't have to be the only one learning these lessons, so good on them for continuing the trend, like with the Guide to Honesty and that one kid. Also, instead of basing his project on raising the mice, he mentions the spaceship he once took care of. So Miss Jones loans him a book on spaceships. That's two things he has to take care of. Anything else? Like, maybe your freaking room? How do you take care of a spaceship anyways? Simple. You just don't lose it and you keep it clean. How did you lose a spaceship? Unless theft is a thing on your world, it'd be pretty hard to lose one. Uh-oh, pickle juice on the book already? How are you going to clean it? You need a plan. First, wash the book. Wash the book, right. And then clean the mouse house. Clean the mouse house, right. And then clean your room. How about these books here? Whoa! Oh, cool! Ah, alloy rims. Any chance this will relate to the bike safety PSA? If I ever find it? Later, Grandpa apparently makes rubber eggs for dinner. It's John's turn to have a, oh crap, I messed up moment by leaving his egg in the microwave. But Gramps knows better. When you're working on something, you've got to keep a close eye on it. Hey, John. How are you going to take care of this egg all week? I, I, I think I'll just have to take my job seriously. So uh, how did the mice like breakfast? Breakfast? Well, if you remember not to lie, just be honest and say you forgot. Uh, they love their breakfast. And uh, thank you for your breakfast, Grandpa. You idiot! Now I know where rubber chickens come from. Please tell me that was just his thoughts. After a moment of dumb and advice on keeping things in one place, Corny tries testing his zapper, which warps him in front of a ghost train. And also by washing that book, Corny must have thought of using the washing machine. The amount of times Corny screws up is a lot higher than normal, and it's getting a bit irritating. The lesson that follows on being responsible makes sense. When you borrow something that belongs to someone else, you have to be more responsible than if it were your own. Well, I guess I thought that if I didn't tell you about it and just tried to fix it myself, you never would know about the mistake. I guess I just made it worse by not telling you. If you had told me, then I could have given you some ideas about how to fix it. Taking responsibility means admitting you made a mistake. Also, his report is changed to the mice he has. Lucky him. And despite what just happened, John caves into his request to borrow his skateboard so he could get lessons from Kate. As long as Corny cleans his room. I just remembered I didn't feed the mice. I'm such a Zarko head. Oh well. Hey, stop. Think. Why should I walk when I can ride? I thought it was stop, think, listen to your heart. Your memory is really slipping. He asks Grandpa for advice on taking care of mice since he forgot the stuff Larry told him. And what he says essentially is, put yourself in someone else's shoes so you know what they would need. And even with that, Corny forgets to feed them again in favor of skateboard lessons. Ooh. No! Hey. Oh! That's it! That's pretty! How am I doing? Uh, that's it! Uh, no! Oh, no. And to top his stupidity, he lets the skateboard get destroyed by an oncoming car. Now John is upset at Corny for breaking his most prized possession. As he sulks, he learns that the screen on the aquarium is off and one of the mice is missing. Corny panics and decides to run away from his problems instead of fixing them. Him. Put him out of his misery, please! It's my fault! Get me out of here! <laughs> Geraldine! I'm so glad you're alright! Come here, Geraldine! Here we go! Now, I know you're hungry, 
And I know you're angry at me about your dirty home. And I know I should treat you guys better. You know something? Instead of just talking about it, I should do something. Should he do something? He should do something. <sighs> he should do something. It's your responsibility to put your things away. It's your responsibility to do the things you say. So naturally, the song montage shows him cleaning and shows events from before. Still not as funny as the Stranger Danger one, though that's a high bar to clear. At any rate, the long song sequence ends and the room is finally clean and holy crap he has a floor! John's still pissed, though Corny tries to cheer him up enough so he could apologize for being an idiot. He even does the put on other people's shoes thing before giving an honest apology. You're right to be mad at me, John. I didn't take care of your skateboard. But I'm gonna buy you another one. How? You don't have any money. I got some. And Mr. Springfield's gonna pay me $20. It's not enough. I know. But I'm gonna get you one somehow. I'm just so mad at myself for making you so unhappy. Me and my egg have to go to the library. You wanna come? Well, that did the trick, and Corny is acting more responsibly. And taking Grandpa's advice, the boys try one of the jelly beans and figure out that they were old. The end result is coming, but first, we get John saying he learned his lesson on raising an egg. Though we didn't get as much of it as I'd hope. Corny gives his speech, blah blah blah, and plot twist, one of the mice was actually male, and the two gave birth to babies. Oh, Corny, you did such a great job taking care of the mice. Here's the money I promised you. And remember, free tickets to the circus when it opens. Thanks, Mr. Springfield. See you later. Hm. Humans sure are odd, but they sure are nice. Need a refresher on that? Stop, think, listen to your heart. Don't be scared. Oh, and Corny won the contest, so he has enough money to buy the skateboard for John. Oh, and one little thing about Mr. Sanders that I didn't really touch upon? It's just that sometimes when John and I come in here, you have one accent, and then the next time we come in, you have another accent. I know, it's sort of bizarre. Yeah. But we have a lot of people who are here that live from other countries, and so I know they like to be reminded of where they came from. So when I talk to them, I talk in their accent. I'd like them to feel like they're a little bit at home. Yeah, whatever. At least Corny can get two skateboards, so they both have a happy ending. It's time for you two to go to bed. No problem. I'll just zap to a park and I can practice before bed. Huh? Hmm, not as good as some other Corny videos, though I think they did better with their lessons here. Like, they attempted to give more than one person a lesson in being responsible, there is some sound advice on knowing what others need and admitting your mistakes, but it's irritating that Corny screws up so much despite spending like three videos learning this stuff. Without Richard playing him, it probably wouldn't have been bearable which is why I'm interested to see someone other than him play our star alien in the dentist video. Otherwise, it's another harmless PSA. At least we got our core nutrition for this month. But until next time, I'm the Media Hunter. Media's my prey, and reviewing them my way. They sure are cute. What are their names? Well, this one's name is Honey Bunny, and the white one's named Geraldine. It, Mr. Springfield, they're both white. I know, and my wife swears she could tell them apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny.